If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified on every new upload. Assalamu alaikum. Let's come to the periodontal ligament traction theory now. So as the name says, there is some kind of force that is generated by the periodontal ligament and it causes tooth eruption. Now let's see what it is. So we all know that we have dental follicle and we have a teeth associated with that follicle. Let's say this is the teeth. So various experiments have been done that has proven that the periodontal ligament or say the periodontal ligament and the dental follicle complex, it is very important in tooth eruption. So just for, you know, knowledge sake, I'm going to tell you. So one of the experiment was that they transacted the root and they placed a metallic barrier. Let's say this is the metallic barrier and the distal surface of the root, this one, let's say, it erupted because it was attached to the follicle all right so it was proven that the follicle is very important in the root eruption or to the eruption and few other experiments were done on rodents and those teeth uh, to be precise incisors were designed in such a way that the effect of root growth and vascular supply were nil in them okay so these experiments showed that as long as the pdl tissue is available the tooth movement occurs okay and uh, third finding is that there are several deformities or say you know diseases like multiple calcifying hyperplastic dental follicle so in these cases also what happens is there is delayed permanent tooth eruption so now we have three findings which support that this periodontal ligament or say the dental follicle pedial complex is important for tooth eruption also if you give some drugs which you know uh, they interrupt the proper formation of collagen then also the tooth eruption will be interfered So all these experiments they show that as long as the dental follicle or developing per periodontal ligament exists tooth eruption can actually occur We also know that our fibroblast let's say these are our fibroblast They have contractile properties So they have the ability to contract and they transmit the contractile force to their extracellular environment okay and particular to the collagen fiber bundles also these are in contact with one another hence they form fibro nexus okay they exhibit fibro nexus by which such forces can be transmitted to the collagen fiber bundle to imagine this let's say we have our root here let's say we have collagen here and let's say we have fibroblast here so a simple analogy that has been given in Auburn's histology is that this fibroblast is our sailor okay and it's pulling a rope this blue rope and this is the collagen collagen okay and this rope is attached to a sail and that is our tooth the sail is our tooth okay Thus, according to this theory, eruption of teeth could be brought about by combination of events involving a force initiated by this fibroblast and this force is transmitted to the extracellular compartment via the fibro nexus that was created okay, and to the collagen fiber bundle which are aligned in a proper or appropriate inclination and this brings about tooth movement. Also notice that these fiber bundles, they must have the ability to, you know, um, align themselves in a proper way. Because if there is interference in this ability to align, then the eruptive pathway is, you know, hampered. The opponents of this theory have questioned the existence of fibronexus. So the existence is kind of questioned. And the junction which appear means these are joined to each other and they form fibronexus so junction which appears they seem to be desmosome desmosomes okay 
and they have no microfilament bundles. Therefore, these cells would not be able to transmit a tractional force that is required to pull the tooth in eruption. So in summary, eruptive movement is multifactorial, like vascular pressure will be at the apex along with the contractile force that is generated by the dental follicle. So these all play an important role and bone formation and resorption facilitate the process. So I hope this video was helpful. If you liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon and kindly share the video. I also have the part 1 of this video. So kindly go check out that video as well. Thanks for watching. Allah Hafiz.